needs are predictable in two ways the refractory period and the threshold of satisfaction are generally both predictable we generally know how long after a hearty meal we will need another one we also know the approximate quantum of food that we will need at that time even when there is some drift in the threshold of satisfaction it is a very slow drift in other words if a gourmet does become a gourmand he does so over a very long period of time once however are unpredictable it is difficult for me to say what i will want more keenly 6 months from now a new luxury car or a trip to the bahamas it is also difficult to say that after i have bought that new car when i will desire as opposed to actually consider buying an even newer more luxurious car similarly i may have gone to the mall to buy a single shirt but there is no knowing how many i will return with or that i will not just get up and go to the mall next week again and buy yet another shirt or some other piece of junk that i will perhaps never use further wants a subject to serious drifts if you were to win a lottery the amount you won will have an implication on what you will want the most the threshold of desire shifts to what we can marginally ill afford i repeat the threshold of desire shifts to what we can marginally ill afford the amount of resources required to fulfill one's needs generally does not drift higher too fast sometimes in fact it even drifts lower a typical human being generally needs i repeat needs less calories at the age of 60 than he did at the age of 16 and this is generally irrespective of how well his needs have been satisfied in the interregnum wants on the other hand if satisfied always drift higher thus the more you work at and so actually the more you satisfy your wants the more your wants will demand satisfaction each want succeeding a successfully satisfied want will as a rule be substantially greater than its predecessor the velocity of this drift if wants are satisfied consistently increases in the direct proportion to the successes experienced recently the logical result of this ever increasing velocity is overreach at some point or the other wants wants reach a stage where they become unsatisfiable i repeat these last few statements each want succeeding a successfully satisfied want will as a rule be substantially greater than its predecessor the velocity of this drift 
if wants are satisfied consistently increases in direct proportion to the successes experienced recently the logical result of this ever increasing velocity is overreach at some point or the other once wants reach a stage where they become unsatisfiable this last statement one would think would be self explanatory but should anyone contest it let us take them on an imaginary journey that i have often gone on in order to arrive at this logically valid end so here goes the fairy tale a long long time ago i did some very good things and god gave me an infinite number of boons after getting that lovely little villa and that cute car i asked god for a tropical island all for myself which i duly got then i got worried about how the rapacious brazilians or congolese or indonesians were stripping away the tropical rainforest and god gave me that country to run it in an ecologically sensitive fashion then i found that the europeans and north americans were unwilling to give respectable lives to the people i sent there while i got busy with revirginizing the lands entrusted to me there could easily have been an alternative possibility perhaps i thought that i must teach democracy to all those bozos who do not understand it So I asked God the dominion over Afghans or Iraqis or North Koreans and I sent them all to good Christian lands to live for a few centuries while they learned all the basics of upright modern and democratic life However the good Christians refused to behave like good Christians and I was forced to go to God again I then asked God for dominion over all developed countries so that I could make lives better for all those human beings. However, before every one of those could feel substantially better taken care of, I hit some of the ceilings and eventually the good Lord God, exasperated, gave me all power over everything on earth. That of course proved to be less than enough. For the resources needed to give everyone a developed world lifestyle requires more than one earth. In any case, I needed some other planets to realize the dream of humanity of finding new planets at least for visiting if not for living there. Eventually, God gave me an authority equal to him. However, I found it bothersome to still have someone who can strip me of that authority and undo all the good work that I had done. God, bound by his promise to me, abdicated. Now, I was way with the capital W to boot. But guess what? That was when life got boring. There was nothing that we could wish for which would not happen. for we were now god thus for us nothing was left wanting or in other words there was nothing left for us to want and with nothing to want there was no success thus no fun what was worse being god we could not even any more end it all by dying the overreach thus arrived by having got everything that can be desired we ended up going back to god and asking for status quo ante the whole trouble of gaining all the powers possible in order to satisfy one's wants was completely worthless it seems one does not need power only the loss of desire to become god i repeat that statement it seems one does not need power only the loss of desire to become god 
well that was the fairy tale this mercifully was only a logical detour one falls by the wayside on the road of wants way before such an occurrence the hurt thus is much lesser than would be should one peel away all the layers of human wants and then end up finding nothing there as we had seen wants were already doubly unpredictable the refractory period or the frequency of reemergence of a fresh desire in the same domain of wants and the threshold of satisfaction therein now strangely we find a third dimension to the unpredictability of wants the velocity of the threshold shift is unpredictable too i repeat these two statements as we had seen wants were already doubly unpredictable the refractory period or the frequency of reemergence of a fresh desire in the same domain of wants and the threshold of satisfaction therein now strangely we find a third dimension to the unpredictability of wants the velocity of the threshold shift is unpredictable too as mentioned earlier this velocity of increase of one's wants is directly proportional to the successes experienced the velocity increases until the overreach arrives and then the malaise sets in the unpredictability lies in the point of overreach which is perhaps unknowable for it always shifts due to the effect of what can be called the feedback loop or um, the practitioner effect or the uncertainty principle what one achieves is not a given it is directly impacted by how much one wants it therefore future wants change as the current ones do we can go on discussing this until we are no more we the point really is this we must learn to distinguish between our needs and our wants and then work towards fulfilling them knowing which ones are fulfillable and which ones not for fulfillment of a want must mean its extinguishment not reinvigoration i repeat this last part fulfillment of a want must mean its extinguishment not reinvigoration <laughs>